We're going to take you back outside for a live look over Burlington and Plattsburgh. Church Street Cam never yeah. disappoints. I know, <laughs> especially with that tree. I wonder how long they're going to keep it up. Yeah, no kidding. I know. Well, Looks good. Finally, though. have some snow. <laughs> yeah, no, still snow globing a little bit out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a storm that just won't quit. Doesn't seem to want to go away. It's crazy. I went out well, back home for my dinner break an hour later. The roads were just as bad as they were earlier this morning. Yeah, very slippery out there. Slippery travel. Take it slow. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let's take you through some of those uh, snow totals, though. Groton coming out with the top 16 and a half inches out there in uh, eastern Vermont. Orange with 15 inches, Barrie 13 and a half, just over a foot in Sharon, and even Shelburne, the Champlain Valley near the lake, seven inches. 10 inches for Saranac Lake and Schuyler Falls, eight for Altona, Plattsburgh, and Ticonderoga. So yeah, that storm certainly overperformed in a lot of areas, and the reason it did so was because we initially thought the dry air that was present near the Canadian border was going to impede the snow from developing. And those heavy snow bands just came up and totally overwhelmed that dry air column. Mother Nature's always got some tricks up her sleeve, and that was certainly one of them with this storm. And we're still adding to these totals by maybe only a half an inch to an inch or so, but still making things slippery, especially along I-89, even parts of I-87 in New York, seeing some of that light to moderate snow activity still going on into the Green Mountains. So I think that continues for the next couple of hours. The main low pressure, though, is uh, really uh, winding up offshore, and you can see it's tucked in just south of Nova Scotia, so that is on its way out. High pressure is on its way in for now. That's for tomorrow and most of Tuesday. Then we have this other potent system that's developing over the four corners now over the Rockies. This is a strong low pressure that's going to move east and we'll track it as it moves across the country. You see that by tomorrow evening, it's already bringing a lot of snow to the upper Midwest and yanking up some Gulf of Mexico moisture. This time we're on the warmer side of the storm. So I think there's enough cold air in place to start as snow, but you see all that heavy rain off to the south that comes up switches that snow over to rain by Wednesday morning. So we could be talking about flooding issues and even a little bit of additional snow accumulation. We'll talk about that in just a second. Wanted to take you through the next couple of days though, because we can finally take a breather. Little bit of that lingering snow the next couple of hours, and there may be some flurries tomorrow morning in the Green Mountains and the Adirondacks, but overall it's a better day tomorrow. Could even be some breaks of sunshine, especially the farther south you are. It's going to be hard to get the clouds out of there near the Canadian border. Now here comes Tuesday. Already see that increase in clouds by Tuesday morning, and by Tuesday evening, the evening commute could turn pretty snowy in parts of the region. So it's a quick moving system and you see that heavy snow in the mountains by midnight though, it should start to change over to that rain, that heavy rain in the valleys and just about everybody will be rain by early Wednesday morning. But that comes along with the strong wind risk. Of course, there's a snow uh, aspect of that as well. We're thinking about a dusting to two for the St. Lawrence Valley, two to four for most of New York, though there will be some enhancement along uh, the Adirondack Northway into Essex County, four to eight inches. Thinking dusting to two for the western slopes of the Green Mountains, but quickly increasing to four to eight inches. So there's going to be a little enhancement to that snow on the eastern slopes. That's the eastern slopes. What about the western slopes? We've got a high wind watch. That's the other aspect of this 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Now, I don't want you to take these numbers verbatim, but it just goes to show that the western slopes will be favored for those strongest wind gusts. Route 11 corridor near Malone, even out by Lake Placid and Saranac Lake. Same thing for the western slopes of the Green Mountains, Jericho, Bristol, even Middlebury down through Rutland. Same thing for the Taconic Range down Route 7. So there could be wind gusts again exceeding 60 miles per hour in some areas. We'll have to watch that damaging wind potential. Also the flooding potential. Look how we get into the 40s on Wednesday. So it turns milder with that rain. Rivers could rise. So we've got a very busy couple of days in the Weather Center tracking that for you. It's quieter Thursday and Friday before we turn our attention to yet another system next weekend.